Greetings, kindred. Wishing you all a happy full moon lunar eclipse. So I thought I'd start with this map first of all. That is from timeanddate.com. Um, I just took a screenshot from there actually. But that's a really good place to go to for astronomical information. And when it comes to eclipses, they really do give a lot of info on areas that it's going to affect. And there's maps and videos and all sorts and timing as well. So the time for your locality, like wherever you're at, it will give you the accurate time for your area. So as we can see, I mean, this middle section here is where the total visibility will be. So that's like West Africa, England, Ireland, Europe, South America, and um, East America, and tip of Canada there. Um, yeah, so that's where the totality will be, right across here. This is the, um, the path. And as the... Um, the colour fades out to the blue, the, the visibility just becomes less and less. So, the lunar eclipse itself will actually begin at 0041 in the UTC time zone. Now, UTC isn't the same as GMT at the moment. GMT is actually one hour ahead until the end of October. So these are UTC times. You can actually convert them to your own time zone or, like I said, go to timeanddate.com and you can get all sorts of information now. So it will begin at 0041 UTC, reach its max at 2.44 UTC and will completely come to an end at 4.47 UTC. And, um, you know, like time and date, Dot com. They also give this little legend here um, of what the shadings actually represent. Now, it's not a total lunar eclipse. It is a partial one. So um, it's not about totality, but eclipse is an eclipse. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the lunar eclipse is really, it's the dark feminine energy. It's a very kind of inner energy, whereas the solar eclipse is more external so it's more masculine. And, um, you know, so it's all about the unconscious mind. Um, and let's actually get into the full moon chart, Will. So the full moon will actually reach its peak on the 18th of September at 3.34 in the GMT time zone at 12.24 in the AEDT time zone. And the full moon will reach its peak on the 17th of September at 22.34 in the EDT time zone. So as the full moon reaches its peak, it will be at three degrees in Pisces, conjunct Neptune. And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And Neptune is in retrograde at six degrees. So this is a very, very... Um, unconscious energy as well in certain respects. I mean, the moon in Pisces is a super sensitive energy anyway, but it's also a very creative energy. Now, whether we're creating mountains out of molehills or whether we're creating, you know, productive art, you know, it depends on where we're at and where this lunar full moon lunar eclipse is taking place in our charts so i mean the moon conjunct neptune can really give us an, a very vivid imagination you know the one thing to watch out for is picking up on other people's energy as well especially if we've got our own stuff going on um because you know the moon in pisces itself is a, like a psychic sponge you know, it picks up all the thoughts and the feelings of other people. It's a very, very intensely psychic energy, especially in conjunction to Neptune. But straight off the cuff, you know, the moon and Neptune in opposition to the sun are creating this T-square towards Jupiter. 
Now, three is the number of Jupiter. So the fact that this moon is creating this T-square alongside Neptune and the sun towards Jupiter in Taurus shows to me that it's going to be a very expansive energy. So the imagination can really run wild during this time. But, you know, what we need to watch out for is overindulgence, um, being too self-absorbed or, you know, experiencing that from other people. You know, it can also create distorted perceptions. Um, wishful thinking, but it is also a powerful energy for manifestation. But we really need to be in the right place for that. You know, we need to be objective and realistic with whatever it is we're manifesting. And to be honest, I wouldn't say we should be manifesting, not under an eclipse, whether it be a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, I would not do any kind of um, manifestation work. I won't go into anything that's, um, you know, like contracts. And it's, you know, a bit similar to a Mercury retrograde, actually. Not starting anything new really is about us being in a, a place of still, a place of calm and you know, keeping ourselves away from anything negative because negative energy will really take its toll on us during this time. But it's a highly impressionable energy with the moon in conjunction to Neptune anyway. And the fact that the unconscious is being triggered, you know, very strongly shows that, you know, we can, if we're not in the right place emotionally, then we can be conjuring up um, a lot of negativity within ourselves. And the reason why I say watch out for overindulgence and stuff like that is because this T-square aimed towards Jupiter in Taurus can really create that, can really exaggerate um, our kind of like addiction or addictive tendencies. So, um, yeah, we just need to watch out for that. I mean, but also, you know, this energy is very, very spiritual, but it is more on the darker lines of spirituality, you know, seeing the hidden, you know, it's all about the hidden forces. And really, you know, it's about a shadow energy, really, not just within ourselves, but the shadow energy in the global community, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I think a lot can emerge during this time, but it will be unseen. And that unseen will probably come out and reveal itself at the solar eclipse because that's when it happens externally where all, you know, the hidden comes out into the external world. So there could be a lot going on behind the scenes right now. But, you know, we need to watch out for, like I said, distorted perceptions. You know, for creative artists, this can be an amazing time where we can produce some really amazing work, whether that's in the light or the dark, because it's all about expression. So I think the good thing to do on the build up to this eclipse is really um, positive daily affirmations, Epsom salt baths, you know, um, guided meditations. We need to get comfortable in the dark. If we're one that has to have the lights on all the time, then we're not comfortable with the dark. But if we're the kind of person that can walk around in the dark comfortably, then we're in a good place this lunar eclipse. So they're the things I think we should work on and be very, very careful about who you surround yourself with during this time. You know, you need to really be around people that are more positive and uplifting or more spiritual. But again, you know, we have to be careful 
of manipulative forces as well, because this energy can also be very deceptive, you know, and um, it can also be very self-absorbing, especially with this T-square aimed towards Jupiter and Taurus, you know, that can really um, create, um, you know, like grandiose fantasies, rushing into things too quickly, being unrealistic, um, emotional excess, idealism, a lack of discrimination. So, you know, an element of fickleness there as well. So we really need to be authentic in what we're doing this lunar eclipse. You know, if we're meditating, we've got to be meditating for the good of all. You know, this has got to be more of a caring, a sharing kind of attitude, <laughs> if you like, this full moon. But, you know, I think a lot of us will be feeling a little bit self-absorbed, especially if we've got like stuff from the past coming up, you know, like with this grand cross that's been going on with Ceres. It goes from a grand cross to a T-square, but it's with the nodes, Ceres in opposition to Mars. So um can be quite a rebellious energy. You know, it can be a very self-protective energy as well. Um, one where we can be quite inhibited, especially since it's a lunar eclipse, because like I said, we tend to go within. You know, if we're in our comfort zone, then I think that's a good place to be. Do you know what I mean? The last thing we want this lunar eclipse is to feel vulnerable in any shape or form. But we do need to watch out for being self-defensive or combative, you know, due to our childhood wounding. You know, although there is a need for us to stand up for ourselves, but in a confident manner, in a confident and productive manner. You know, we will need to put boundaries in place because we need to protect our auras from negative energy during this time. But it's how we do that. If we can use tact and diplomacy while we're doing that, then, you know, we're doing it in the right way. But if we're going to be kind of self-defensive or, you know, not be honest and truthful as to why we need our space, then, you know, there definitely needs to be some healing work done there. And obviously, when we are going through these little traumatic experiences, you know, we're not in a good place. And, you know, we do feel vulnerable. But, you know, the best thing to do really is just shut off and just, you know, get into that positive place where we can actually reap the benefits of this energy. So with the moon in sex out to Uranus, you know, we can let go of the past. You know, we can find new ways to develop emotional security within ourselves because that's going to be an issue here. And with Neptune in sextile to Uranus, which is a generational aspect, you know, it can expand our spiritual consciousness as long as we're following our own intuition that's based on a realistic perception. So, again, we just got to be careful building castles in the sky during this time we mustn't mistake this energy for a good energy for manifestation although you know what we think we are creating here so we mustn't be led astray pull it that way during this time you know and our moon is also involved in this kite aspect so you know we do have uranus in trying to pluto and Pluto's in trine to the south node and the black moon Lilith. And then they're in trine to Uranus and Uranus is in trine back to Pluto. So this isn't like, this is mostly an Earth kite, but Pluto is in Sagittarius or is retrograded back to Sagittarius. So there's a little bit of fire there. Pluto's in the element of fire. So it's like earth and fire. 
So I just feel that there's going to be kind of sudden changes going on during this time when it comes to like reform, especially when it comes to like science or or the hidden. So this may not actually become apparent until around about the solar eclipse or just after that. You know, when I'm talking about we've got to be careful about what we're manifesting with the moon in sextile to Pluto, which is, you know, the moon and Neptune are actually sitting on one side of this sky. And I think, yeah, is it a double? Let me just see. Oh, no, that's the ascendant. Yeah, so we've got Pallas on one side of the kite. So it's a double-sided kite, basically. So we've got Neptune and Moon on the top on one side, and we've got Pallas at the top on the other, and Pallas is at one degree in Scorpio. So I feel a lot of revelations will be coming about during this time. But Scorpio is also about the hidden. So I feel there is a lot going on behind the scenes or some of us may be kind of recognising patterns in the global community. And, um, you know, they say knowledge is power. And I think in this instant, knowledge is power, but it's something we need to sit on right now. We mustn't be impulsive in how we react to that. I think, you know, we need to look at the deeper aspects of it. Just take note at the moment, but I do feel there's an element of recognition going on during this full moon lunar eclipse. So, you know, I've spoken about this kite before, and um, it's a, it is very reforming since there's a you know a few generational aspects going on here. You know, socially, there's going to be a lot going on in our communities. So I think we just need to be careful of what we're getting involved in. And um, really, it's not a time to get involved in anything that's intense and heavy. It's definitely a time, like I said, to break away from the crowd or, you know, any kind of situation that's intense, uncomfortable, um, you know, conflictive. You know, I just really do feel that we need to work on our own self-healing if stuff is coming up for us, because, you know, we've still got this, um, like I said, this grand cross going on with the goddess Ceres, which is all about childhood abuse or childhood neglect. And some of us will be, you know, facing some of those issues. So, you know, it's kind of like a very, very deep, and reflective full moon lunar eclipse that we're going to be experiencing. But we're also entering into the September equinox as well. So let's talk about that chart a little bit. So the sun will cross the equator in the GMT time zone at 8.50 on the 23rd of September. So you can convert that to your own time zone. So when the sun The sun is actually in the north at the moment, north of the equator, but will be moving to the south. So that means that in the north of the hemisphere, the global hemisphere, we will be entering officially into autumn. And in the southern hemisphere, they will be officially moving into springtime. Lucky there, eh? (laughs) mate. We didn't get much of a summer here in the northern hemisphere this year. But anyway... As the sun crosses the equator, the sun will be at six degrees in Virgo. And also in this little stellium here. So we have the black moon Lilith in conjunction to Mercury. And Mercury is in conjunction to the sun. Fortunately, there is six degrees between them. Not, You know, if it was less than four, I would say watch out for a mind overload, but, you know, there's a little bit of space there. So that can really give us a good uh, mental 
um, clarity or perceptions. But we do have the self node there as well in conjunction. So there seems to be like six degrees between the sun and the self node and six degrees between the sun and Mercury. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about that because stelliums are very challenging on the whole, especially with the black moon lily from one side of it, the south node on the other, with Mercury and the sun in the middle in Virgo. I mean, the black moon lily is at the last degree of Leo. But, you know, the south node is all about our comfort zones. The black moon lily is about a shadow. In Leo, it's more about the ego. And with Mercury and the sun in the middle, I just feel that maybe, you know, we're not really in a comfortable place. Um, you know, maybe we're within the, with the Virgoan energy, it could be a little bit of self-sabotaging going on, like we're not thinking before we speak. Um, or we're kind of like, you know, not as tactful as we could be. And this little stellium is actually creating a T-square as well. Of course, the north node is in opposition to this little stellium here. Although the black moon Lilith is really only included because of the, the close proximity to Mercury. But overall, you know, with the sun in square to Mars, we can be our own worst enemy due to impulsiveness or, you know, a block on how we express ourselves. So that can cause a lot of frustration. And, you know, we can come a little bit kind of dominating with that energy, it can also create a little bit of resentment, it can be kind of very an argumentative energy as well. But, you know, it's it's like we're lacking in self-awareness with this energy, with Mercury and the Sun in the middle of this stellium. You know what I mean? So can be a little bit brash or we can jump to conclusions or be a little bit narrow-minded. So I just feel, again, that's something we need to watch out for. And then we have another T-square with Vesta who's at 25 degrees in Leo in opposition to Saturn, who's still retrograding for Aquarius. And they're creating a T-square towards the moon in Taurus. So the moon is in Taurus. So the moon was in Pisces at the eclipse and making a square with Neptune and the sun towards Jupiter in Taurus. And now the moon has entered into Taurus at the equinox. So I feel this is very relevant, you know, so I feel, you know, there can be, I think we can like question ourselves with this Vesta Saturn opposition. It, there can be a little bit of melancholy there. We may feel a little bit oppressed, um, very self-reflective. You know, people can be questioning ourselves. I think maybe the, in the lunar eclipse, some of us could lose ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, feelings of insecurity, especially around our finances or our self-worth. And we need to watch out for being overindulgent, especially when it comes to like a little bit of retail therapy. We can take that a little bit too far, you know, just to fill that hole within. And, um, you know, there can be a little bit of, like I said, depression. Um, very inhibited. This equinox is going to really bring about that inhibited feelings. And, you know, there can be kind of like childhood issues coming up that dampen our spirits or, you know, we can actually feel quite isolated as well. So this is really like a continuation or an escalation from the lunar eclipse. So at the lunar eclipse, we really do go within ourselves and we're super sensitive, very restless, nervous energy going on at the lunar eclipse. And then at the um, equinox on the 23rd, 
I think it's about five days later. So I would say over that week, we could be feeling pretty vulnerable or feeling very inhibited or isolated. You know, it can be quite a lonely time for some, especially in the Northern Hemisphere as we're entering into the autumn months and leaving summer behind. So again, even in a seasonal aspect, it's all about letting go. And I think it's a very deeply re receptive time as well for us all to really kind of like just shed, shedding negative energy, clearing out clutter, um, preparing ourselves for the winter months, basically. I feel it's a really good time just to really get, if we've had a really busy summer, it's a really good time just to be low profile, get some rest. It's a time for cleansing the mind, body and soul. So I'm going to leave it there, Kindred. And as always, I'm sending you peace and much love. Take care.